I don't want to cry. I'm sorry that I'm doing this on camera, but this is not going to be the most flattering video, but it's very real. For some people, it's just pets, but for those people, those are people that don't, don't have them. Because they are so much more than that. I like people, they don't, they don't judge you, they're there for you unconditionally, and they're family. <laughs> Hola amigos and welcome. This is actually my second attempt to make this video because of emotions and just me not being able to like want to to remember things to and really stay on topic without kind of going in circles and not making sense. So please bear with me. Uh, that clip you just saw was the clip from the first day I considered euthanization. And I was very emotional. I was torn. I felt guilty. Just so many emotions um, in that clip. And you could, you could certainly see it. Well, just to kind of backtrack, give you guys a background story. Loki started sneezing sporadically shortly after my first bunny Luna passed away two years ago took him to the vet they didn't find anything wrong with him internally he said to just keep an eye on it and that was kind of uh what we did and then and then about two months ago we <sighs> About two months ago, we found him and almost like covered in blood. And we were freaking out. We took the like the booger, hard booger that he seemed to have, which was almost seemed like a blood cloth. And that helped him a little bit better. But he was very, he was struggling to breathe for sure. Cleaned him up, called the vet, emergency appointment, got him to the vet within like a half an hour. And because of COVID, we couldn't go inside. So the vet came out, and he was really great. I don't remember his name, Dr. G. That's all I remember. And he pretty much told us that if he made it through the night, it was going to be a miracle. That we had two options, having him refer us to a bunny specialist that had more in-depth equipment to look further inside him. And it would have to be like very invasive most likely surgery just to see what's going on and what was go happening with him but that it wouldn't be guaranteed that he would be okay or that he could send us home with medication um, antibiotics and anti-inflammatory medication and also to have him by by dehumidifier and just to kind of see what happened but pretty much he said it was going to be a miracle if he made it through the night we took the second option especially if it was going to be his last night with us because we wanted to be with him if he was going to to pass instead of having him pass away during surgery or having invasive tools go and trying to see what was wrong with him so that's what we did and of course just like i knew he would he survived that night he was such a trooper and such a just such a strong bunny I'm not going to talk about how great he was because that's going to get me emotional. So if you want to learn more about Loki, what kind of rabbit he was, you want to see him in a video I did prior, you could check the video out. Uh, he was incredible. And, um, well, bought us two months with him. And then another attack happened. And I was by myself. I was by myself. And that was super scary. That was the first, but I, I just followed everything. You know, I took the cloth out, I cleaned him up, and and I made sure that he had the dehumidifier by him. But that was the first day. That again, that's the clip. That was the first day that I considered euthanization because 
the thought of me not being around if he had another episode and finding him gone covered in blood that thought to me was super super horrifying terrifying and i didn't want to take the chances so i knew that euthanization was an option and something i was going to have to look into i was so so sad so emotional uh, and i remember looking for youtube videos on rabbit euthanization trying to maybe learn more about it or see if there was there was kind of like a video that could help me decide if it was the right time or or not but most of the videos that did populate aside from one video by oh, i can't remember but i will link it down below aside from that video every other video was more on like how to do it at home but it, it didn't seem so so um no that was not even an option but <laughs> I didn't see anything about someone talking about experience at a veterinarian or coming or showing how they came to the decision. And this is what I want this video to be. I want this video to be a source for you, whether you're considering euthanization or you've already performed, you already taken your rabbit to get euthanized at a veterinarian hospital and are just kind of dealing with the aftermath of the emotions and you know you're just probably like like me because i did the same thing even after i used a nice low-key i looked at videos just to kind of i don't know i guess seeing other people go through it made me feel like not like i wasn't alone and i know obviously pets get euthanized all the time but most of the stuff out there is catered towards dogs and rabbits are such beloved super intelligent and awesome animals that i think more people should own because they're amazing um but yeah not a lot of not a lot of resources out there on rabbits so i want this to be a resource for you all right so that was that was the first day i considered it and looked into it didn't really find a lot of good helpful things but i did find one tiktok uh that said think of five things your animal likes loves to do and when your pet can't do three out of those five things then that's when you know it's time so i kept that in mind and, and loki was fine for the rest of the day but then it happened it happened again the next day or so and we went through all the steps went through all the steps and this time it was a little bit worse and I started to think about five things Loki loved to do. Even the first three things that came to mind were kind of an indication. So he loved to be my loose. Since he started being sick, we had separated them, but I would occasionally have them out to kind of like bond or I would have one of them out to kind of go by the other's cage. And I normally free roam my rabbits, but because Loki was sick, it just didn't seem right. To just have him in in a cage and then lose she she's still young so she's still learning not to be destructive so that's also why she was in the cage so i would let one of them out to kind of like be by the other near the cage um he loves he loved bananas and he also loved to show affection like either if i lay down on the floor or if i laid or if i kind of like sat by the cage he would come and like lick me and he was just the sweetest. So just even those three things, I took him by, after he was cleaned up, I took him by Luce's cage and he just stood there. Like didn't even pay attention to her. Like didn't even, wasn't even curious to get closer to her. Like previously he just stood there. Like almost like he didn't, like he didn't know what was going on. We had we gave him a little piece of banana. He loved bananas. And he was eating the banana, but later on noticed that he didn't eat all of it and part of it was still in his mouth. So obviously took that out. But that was a big, big sign. That was when, I think that's when I knew. When, when he didn't finish that piece of banana, that's when I knew that things were bad. And the third thing was that he would be so sweet and would groom. But again, 
whether I was like on the floor or near him, like almost like he was lost. So long story short, I pretty much knew. So I, I knew, I knew in my heart, it was just a matter of time. But I, I guess at that point I wasn't ready. And then last week I actually happened to be off and I heard a choo, a choo, a choo. So I ran blood. And at this point it was almost becoming like a regular thing. And that's another reason why I knew that our time with him was coming, was coming to an end. And, and I just, I just, we, we just knew that our Loki was such a trooper, but that he was suffering, that it wasn't fair to him. Yes, he, he was still alive and, but having those episodes be a normal thing now was not normal and because he was such a trooper I know he would have held on he probably could have still been with us another month or so but that's no way to live that's no way to live and it, again it goes back to those three things that he loved to do that he was no longer really doing those things that in my heart as much as it hurt to know that I was going to be putting him to well, not, not me, but I was going to be the reason why he was going to be put to sleep. That was hurtful, but I knew that that was the right thing to do. I knew that I was going to also find peace in knowing that he was going to be at peace. Like, he wasn't going to be suffering. And also, I kept telling myself, he's gonna, he's gonna join Luna up in, in Rainbow Heaven or wherever pets go. And... Yeah, that made me feel better. So we called around. We called around. I already knew where I was going to get him cremated. I already knew that I wanted to cremate him because my first rabbit, Luna, was cremated at a place not too far from my home. And they did such an amazing job. They were so sweet. And I already knew where he was going to get cremated. But I had never euthanized an animal. Luna died naturally. So calls around places first I would take him sooner like than later like if possible that night uh, because I I didn't want to watch him suffer anymore I didn't I, I couldn't do that to him anymore so called around a couple places and first place that pretty much said yeah bring him in when you're ready and we'll we'll they give us obviously the, the the information as far as the cost, um, and and I'm sorry I don't remember the exact cost, but I do have the paper somewhere, so I'll pull it out if if I have it here with me. Uh, but it was around 120 for the euthanization, which I think is super reasonable. And then the the cremating service was another 120ish, so it came to about. 240 ish total for both the euthanization and the cremation <clears throat> so we drove to the veterinarian about 30 minutes from our home where he was going to get euthanized we had to call in when we got there because of coronavirus we're brought into a room the the vet veterinarian pretty much explained to us how they were going to first um put them like put him to sleep before actually euthanizing him. He would not feel anything. But before the, the actual injection, there would be, I think it was with, with some kind of gas or something to put him to sleep. Um, asked if we wanted a couple minutes and we said yes. And just to let her know when we were ready. And that's exactly what happened. We waited outside until they called us. Um, Oh, and, and the vet did ask if if we were going to want the body back, and we said yes. So I took about, I want to say, maybe 30 to 40 minutes that we were waiting outside. I don't remember exact time because I wasn't thinking about how long it was or anything. I was just trying to distract myself. I was on the phone in the parking lot in the car and got a call, got the body. They put the body in a little... A little like they put body in a box and then we took we took it home 
Unfortunately, by this time, it was around, I want to say 9 p.m. So the cremation location was no longer open. Um, so I had to just wait until the next day to call in and ask if I could bring Loki in. And uh, we kept the body cool in a cold place. Not in, not in the fridge, though, because I... <laughs> don't think I could have done that every time I opened the fridge I probably would have thought about it so cool place um, it was cold that day too so it helped um, and very next morning as soon as the cremation location opened I called and they're as always they're so awesome and they said yeah bring him in when you're ready they asked if we wanted to be there we said no we just wanted to pick up the ashes we didn't want to watch the whole cremation so that's what happened and and i'm going to just talk about them because they're just awesome if you're in new jersey and if you live in the ocean county area or you're willing to make the drive they're absolutely amazing this is my second time using their services and they never disappoint okay so they are called forever remembered and what you when you get there you give information and then you pick out the urn where you're going to have your ashes be put and i'll show you guys the ones i ended up picking for loki um so they give you that and then once you pick up the ashes they give you a death certificate uh and it just tells you a little bit. This is Loki's. And then the contract, just talking about when you give them permission to cremate your pet. And then, oh, actually, here's the invoice. Total, it, the the cost is one twenty five, but with taxes, it came to be one thirty three twenty eight. With Luna, they gave me automatically a lock of fur, but this time I called just to make sure they were still doing that. And this is the envelope with the lock of fur. I haven't opened it yet because I'm not ready. <laughs> but when I am ready, I'm going to actually put his lock of fur with Luna's lock of fur that I have and put it into a little locket or something so I can carry it with me. And yeah, I might I might actually do a video on how I do that, um, my DIY for that. So yeah, they give you a lock of fur, and yeah, that's pretty much it. This is the bag that I came in. This is their their little um, I don't know what it's called, guys, but it just has like their name, their address. I'll link everything down below, and then they have Loki's name here. The bag is very nice they put some nice wrapping paper uh, just very the way they do things is just so respectfully done and they're so sweet and I highly recommend their services again if you're in New Jersey or if you're willing to make the drive you would not you will not regret it really um, okay so I'm getting emotional so I'm going to be wrapping up this video soon I'll just quickly show you guys his ashes and uh, I'll just show you guys a picture of the little little mantle area I have for my bunnies. This is Loki's ashes, and then they engrave Loki on this little gold tag. And they do they did that with Luna too, so they, they do this. And I forgot to mention that also they include this little little booklet thing um, with his paws and and his little nose imprints of it. And then the bag, they talk about the rainbow bridge. Very nice. Um, forever remembered. <sighs> I'm sorry if this video was maybe all over the place. Um, I just really hope that if you are going through something similar, I'm so sorry that you are. But I hope that this video could have helped you in any way. And if you are watching this video, I think it's because you're really... You really care so just know that you have done your best given your your pet the best life and so much love and 
And um, my heart goes out to you if you're going through something similar, whether you're considering euthanization or you have euthanized your pet. My heart really goes out to you. Pets are amazing, you guys, and we don't deserve them. So, all right. Well, I normally don't do sad videos like this, but this is real, and I wanted to certainly share it with you guys. Oh, my, my lash is coming off from all my tears. <laughs> well, make sure to subscribe. I have more light videos also. Most of my videos are DIY, lifestyle, and try with me videos. So hit that like button if you appreciated this video. So I know that, you know, you're open to these types of videos. And see you guys in the next one. Stay safe.